Hi everyone, so should you learn geometry nodes? Recently Blender Guru put out a video providing some advice for newcomers to Blender and one of the pieces of advice was to avoid geometry nodes if you're a beginner because it's quite like an overwhelming complex thing and you might get distracted from like foundational skills which are very important and will always be important especially something like basic modeling and this is not a disagreement but I just think it's an interesting thing to talk about because though generally yes like for the majority of people probably avoiding geometry nodes to start with would be more beneficial for new learners I think in some cases it might be quite appropriate for newcomers to jump into geometry nodes as fast as they can so there's been quite a bit of discussion about that blender guru video behind the scenes and the discussion kind of largely reminds me of other conversations i've had about kind of different areas of blender for different reasons and i'm drawn to old conversations about cognitive differences of learners and how people use software in different ways sometimes optimized towards their cognitive strengths and and their types of memory bear with me on this so not everyone thinks in the same way this is kind of highlighted by the fact that some people have like aphantasia where they can't like visually see things in their mind's eye so they can imagine but they can't really see what they imagine in some way this bleeds into memory when i'm learning things especially nowadays onboarding a lot of medical information for my studies i noticed that when i'm recalling information i visually see a table of what i was learning from in my mind and then i can recall things on the table not always the case though and I'm trying to put effort into not always doing that because the relying on visual memory might be considered like a superpower in some way. It doesn't mean you instinctively know the knowledge. Like recalling is not exactly the same as knowing something. Anyway, to do with Blender, I'm going to give you two examples of how this type of cognition plays into the software. So first of all, shader nodes and geometry nodes. There are add-ons to help you speed up the process of making nodes, such as Node Wrangler. Not just making them, but like organizing them, swapping out which nodes are active. Lots of really good shortcuts for that. And a lot of people use Node Wrangler to do that. So they can just like hold down a hotkey, click on different things, and it auto adjusts what's being selected. So you can like preview your content. I never really clicked with Node Wrangler, even though it's like something that most people that really get into nodes end up using. The reason why I never really used it is because the act of individually creating the links between different nodes, even if it's not very efficient, helps to reinforce a visual memory of the node tree layout for me. So I like doing things manually in the nodes because it's this cognitive visual spatial reinforcement. I have an understanding of where things are happening and every time I make a modification I am remembering seeing where that modification happens. Whereas if I was just cropped to a certain part of the node tree and just clicking on specific nodes and having the links generated automatically I can't remember what links have changed. I need to see it happening. Likewise, when it comes to Python in Blender, and by the way, we will get onto the point about beginners using geometry nodes, but we need to understand this. When it comes to Python for Blender, I code in a different way to other people. And I've got a little bit of ridicule about this in the past, so I've had to try and explain it. When I'm writing things like algorithms, oftentimes there are so many different like conditional cases, bear with me if you don't know anything about code, where you're checking to see whether something is true or not, and then performing an action of some kind in response to those conditions. Sometimes it's like multiple steps of logic. Logic. Now, if you had an algorithm like that, a lot of people that like code, they're very like efficient mindset people, and they'll try and condense everything into as small number of lines as they can. And I think sometimes there's a bit of an air of superiority about that on like online forums. This is the perfect way to write. This is following these conventions, convention set X, Y, Z, whatever, standardization, blah, 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 blah. When I do code, I like to keep things as exposed and linguistic as possible, again, for two reasons. One of them is this visual mapping. Another reason is if I can linguistically read out what's happening more easily than like a condensed algorithm, then in the future, because I work on so many different projects, when I come to return to the project, I've effectively left myself code, which also properly acts as documentation in my mind anyway, where you can see the logical track of what's happening without having to mentally unpack a condensed formula. Now, the point of telling you about those two things is that when people use the same sets of tools, they don't see them the same way. And the information or like the data of what you're creating and interacting with, even your memory of the experience as you're working on something, is not necessarily stored nor accessed the same way by other people. And this kind of leads on to abstraction. So two people looking at a large project, let's say it's a tutorial project being done by someone that they're watching online. One person looks at the project and goes, wow, that's such a 
single big project to do that's overwhelming. I've either got to do it all at once or I'll never do it. Person number two looks at it and says, wow, that's such a big, large project. It's made of so many smaller pieces. I can work on them individually. What's happening there is one person sees a project as a whole, like a brick wall that they need to punch through, and another person sees it from a more top-down perspective as a bunch of smaller things that can be navigated, compartmentalized. What's this got to do with geometry nodes? Okay. Yes, learning to model with Blender, like the individual modeling features, extrude this, insert this, bevel this, whatever, that's important. But some people are more keyed into abstract methods of thinking than others. And Geometry Nodes is, by its design, an abstraction tool where you are able to control many things with fewer actions by designing tools that do that. It may be the case, and I think this will happen for a lot of people, that sticking strictly to finite skills in their learning process, like basic modeling, basic shader creation, UV unwrapping, whatever, and only doing that during their learning process would trigger a burnout or a boredom especially when looking at, you know, the modern social scene with all the AI artwork and comparisons to artists that have been doing things for ages, where for those people, playing with geometry nodes early may give them a more exciting and new approach to testing their brand new modeling skills in a way that plays into their cognitive bias of seeing things in more abstract ways. So to put that more simply, I think there are a lot of people out there that geometry nodes will be the thing that gets them to stick with Blender. And that if we tell those people not to play with geometry nodes when they're learning Blender, then we may end up having a drop off of skill slash talent that would otherwise have gotten hooked and then brought into the community. So again, that won't be appropriate for everyone because, you know, if we talk about averages, most people are going to think pretty much the same way. It's going to be difficult to click with geometry nodes. I think it does take a certain kind of mind. We see that in the community. People congregate into like node based servers. It is really interesting how node communities have formed in Blender. I mean, there's a brand new geometry node subreddit even. Aaron Dale's Discord server is another one, but not everyone's into that kind of thing, and some people just can't click with it. But I'm surrounded by tons of extremely skilled people with like really original solutions to problems that do not fit into the traditional mold. And most of them had really obscure and weird like entry points into Blender. There is no such thing as one single path or a single piece of advice for newcomers, strictly based on the fact that we don't know like what people are coming into the software. Software, and you can't imagine a type of mind that you've never really met or interacted with before. And again, I don't want this to be like disagreement or drama or whatever, because uh, Andrew's points are actually like really good in the video. And I should also say in discussion videos or like advice videos, it's very often the case that the creator will know these things already, but you just, you know, you can't throw every single exception into every video. So Andrew already knows everything I'm saying. I'm just adding a little bit more context for other newcomers that might want a bit of guidance that feel a little bit outside of like the regular path of things. But another point that was made in that video is that for companies that are hiring people that know geometry nodes, they tend to hire one person that's the specialist on geo nodes. And that might give the impression that the demand for geo nodes is low if they're only hiring like single specialists. On the contrary, I would say the demand for geo nodes is growing rapidly as companies are experimenting with integrating into their work flows, therefore they're hiring individual specialists on GeoNodes now to see what it can do and to convert things from other software like from Houdini into Blender Geometry Nodes to see if it's more usable or functional or just generally easier to work with. So on that perspective, I would say that GeoNodes interest is rising, therefore it would be beneficial for people to start playing with it as soon as possible in their learning process if they are interested in going in for that kind of job. It should be said as well, not everyone is interested in trying to get a job when they're learning Blender. That is something that does rub me the wrong way sometimes. Online, I don't like the whole like ex-senior visual effects posturing culture that grows in certain corners of social media, where it's like, if you're a 3D artist, you have to do this. Your portfolio must look like this. You must do this. Most people that learn Blender are not looking for a job. I don't have data to back that up, but I am pretty confident about it from all my years of experience of talking to people running a community roundup series and running a community and co-creating a website to share people's short films, which I know has basically been hibernating for years. I am quite certain that most people learning Blender are not looking for a job. I would hazard to say that most of the new waves of the YouTube centered audience come from people that are inspired by animated shows and films and or video games, excited by the prospect of kind of playing with that, integrating with it, maybe seeing it as an escape in some way, even if it is a financial 
financial escape. But when people tend to see it as a financial escape, it's more so like I see a lot of indies, independence. Blender provides some kind of like an alternative like path in life because it's so like free and open source. Anyone can access it and try and build something for themselves, which is I guess is something we're also seeing like industry experts doing. A lot of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people being laid off from video game and visual effects companies. A lot of them go off to do their own things because they're just so freaking fed up of like prostituting their skills for a company, failing to get in, having to deal with all that. We're sorry to say, we won't be progressing your application. And when they do get into the company, it's full of people that have such intense personality disorders. Everywhere is subject to like abuse allegations. You think it's so hard to get into these game development companies. You'd think that, wow, the people they're hiring must be like the cream of the crop, top dons, the best people ever. And they just collapse into a pile of like lawsuits and allegations. And, and at the end of it all, everyone just gets laid off anyway. So the whole like, yeah, ex senior massive company posture thing online. So much of it is just like an effing joke. I don't know if I'll leave any of this in the video. <laughs> Anyway, the point is, people are different. I don't have a normal way of thinking about things. Sometimes I've hesitated to talk about my approaches to things in Blender, because I know that not everyone will understand it. But some people do. I've had, you know, moments where people have like made fun of, again, I've mentioned two examples earlier, like the code and the node thing. I've had people make fun of me for both of those. But I remember seeing a situation once where someone was saying like my coding was weird in a Discord community. And then someone else came along and said, actually, Curtis has talked about this philosophy of creativity over efficiency and then they link the second channel video and one thing that was really encouraging to me was like wait some people do get it like i think they see themselves in an approach that someone else takes and when i see that it kind of reminds me that there are actually more people like us out there we don't all click with the same things anyway i don't want to drag it on for too long i thought it'd be an interesting area to discuss to add a bit more context andrew's video blender guru's video is not wrong you know it's a nice to watch well organized video for like the general masses of youtube but since I'm like one of the patron saints of doing things in weird ways in Blender, I'm just like, hey, for the rest of you that kind of fell by the wayside, it is okay to learn geometry nodes if you're starting out in Blender. It might be the exact thing you need to click onto the software and find your confidence. So yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe. Oh, and if you made it this far through the video, put a spaghetti emoji in the comments. That will show me if you did make it this far. It's just a little tradition we do on this channel. Uh, it's spaghetti this time because, you know, node links, we call them noodles for a laugh. And I guess spaghetti is like the most noodly emoji I can think of. If you press the Windows key and the period key on Windows and you can actually bring up an emoji keyboard. Oh, there is a noodle emoji. Steaming bowl. Okay, anyway, have a great day everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.